I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry. I still don't know when my camera starts filming. Anyway, but I was, you know, brushing my hair and bringing back so much of my hair. I was sitting up there using these crappy, crappy products with sulfates and cones and, or at least not knowing, you know, let me put it like this, not knowing that cones, you know, eventually can build up on your hair and the only way to get it out is to use a sulfate, depending on what cones are in your, um, conditioner you a lot of times have to use a sulfate to get it out did not know all these things so i was just pulling through putting my hair through crap thinking that okay now that i've started washing it more and i've started using a conditioner when i wash i really thought i was doing something when in fact i was doing nothing absolutely nothing i um i when the bulk of the time while i was um uh transitioning I originally started using um, something my roommate gave me, which was L'Oreal uh, L'Oreal or Garnier Fructis um, Fortifying Shampoo and Conditioner, which is for color treated, because I still had some color in my hair from my relaxed days, and I also, and it was also for relaxed or chemically or permed hair. So this is what I was using in my hair. Now some of those ingredients aren't exactly on the up and up and maybe on a later date or maybe I'll insert in this video like actually showing you guys like what was in there and why my hair was getting nowhere. I was not deep conditioning. What is deep conditioning? I was not doing any type of hot oil treatment. What was a hot oil treatment? Like what was all this? I was just simply washing and adding conditioner to my hair and then and then twisting my hair, rolling it up, and then calling it a day. And then I would let it air dry. That's the only, oh, and so, oh, well, most of the time I would let it air dry, but at that time it was still like a half and half. Sometimes I would air dry my hair, and other times I would borrow my roommate's hooded dryer, put my hair up under the hooded dryer, dry it, and that would be it. So then in the next half of, uh, you know, the year before I learned all my information, I started for like a month i used the body of eden which was by that little girl uh with her all natural stuff and blah 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 i used that for a while um but i was just like eh, whatever i like the shampoo because you know or the conditioner because you know the tingly sensation but i kind of stopped using that and i guess i haven't seen her products in a while so maybe she just doesn't sell her stuff anymore then after that i started oh my goodness from from this was around this had to be from about May till September, maybe, when I had the, the hair epiphany. Um, when finally I was using Cantu products, Cantu Shea Butter products. And I was just like, oh, well, this is this is great right like I got the shampoo, I got the conditioner, I got the daily moisturizer, I got the leave-in, I even, did I get the did I get the pomade? I may have got the pomade. So I had this full line of products and I was using them for a while. And, um, once again, my hair didn't feel any better. Didn't feel any worse. Um, I was using the Cantu leave-in. It was okay. I mean, after a while, it sometimes made my hair, um, stink. And I know if you see reviews on Cantu leaving, you'll hear that be like a complaint sometimes that it'll kind of leave your hair sometimes when sticky. Sometimes I did get the white streak, so I stopped using it. But right when I started using that, a few months later, I'm sorry, I'm being very, I'm sorry, I keep shaking the screen. But right, right around September is when I discovered naturallycurly.com. And then from there, I found out all about uh, natural, uh, how to care for naturally curly hair, the curly girl method. Um, I learned about the top 10 ingredients to avoid putting in your hair. And yes, it's propylene glycol, it's um, DMD and hydrotonin and other things. And you know, I'm, you know, I still try to go by that of at least the top 10 ingredients to avoid, which is a lot of the commercial products that we see that are sold. And when I found out, about what I had been, you know, it still didn't click really until a few days ago about why my hair just really didn't grow while I was transitioning because I was treating my hair like it wasn't fragile because it's like it's like a different mindset process that you have to to go through because believe it or I mean whether you want to admit it or not a lot of times and I'm sorry to isolate any of my audience but black people we are taught that our hair it subtly directly is that it's tough. That it can withstand this. Like, you know, when my 
my hairdresser, my stylist would be like straightening my hair. Like I stopped straightening my hair as much, but you know, it's still, um, I stopped straightening my hair as much, but I would still go get straightened like maybe every other month or something like that. So she would be cranking the heat up as high as it could go. As high as it could go. And when I was straightening out my own hair, because after a while I learned how to straighten out my own hair and still get pretty good results like she did, I was cranking the heat up as high as it would go. Now, don't get me wrong. I was using like a heat protected, like that most likely had um, a lot of silicones in it. But anyway, so, um, anyway, so I sat up there and, you know, when I learned what I learned, I pretty much dissed Cantu leave-in. And I used it only until my curl biz came in. Um, I'm excuse me, not Curl Biz. Um, my Curls product line came in from Curls that Biz, and from there, I think I did. I did uh, shampoo my hair out to get all the cones, any type of product buildup out of my hair. I did use those, and from then on out, I learned my lesson. I learned about my products, what I should be putting in my hair, what I should be doing, and that's when you guys. You know, right around that time, it was September, October when I started, you know, this whole thing happened. After that, that's when, you know, I got tired of the two textures. And in December, I decided to big chop. And then from there, you just see the things that I've learned and about the products and things like that. And I, deep conditioning came into my life. Co-washing came into my life. So after all of that... Then, as you guys see in my old hair threads, my hair just started to thrive and it just started to grow. Which is why now, even though I'm two years natural, I've only done a full, for real year of really taking care of my hair. And so then you'll be able to see at the end of the month, that I mean at the end of my year, I'll probably be where a lot of people were at year one. So if anybody is trying to be hard headed like me, I'm telling you, just do not do it. I have now just officially today accepted protective styling as a way of life and it not being optional. Um, like Kim A. Tube said, you know, you can't do cute hairstyles all the time and then expect to retain length because those cute hairstyles are going to mean that you are going to have to manipulate your hair a lot, a lot. And that means you're going to unnecessarily break your hair off prematurely and you're not preserving your hair strands. So it's not to say that you can every once in a while do it up. Well, for me, do it up, grab your brush, do a puff, whatever. But you just want to minimize it as little as possible. And I think that's the biggest thing that I learned. Like, I did these twists mainly, you know, for their protective styling. But because also I was tired of doing my hair. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, to me, I mean, a lot of people like my twists. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, pin up, you know, one side. Just using my hands, just, you know, pin up one side and do a hairstyle if I want to. But other than that, I really... You know, I don't really, you know, do that or, or anything. I just kind of now, I'm kind of just like trying to leave my hair alone. So, um, so yeah, as you, I mean, you'll see, like, as you keep seeing my videos, a lot of my, uh, you kind of see me doing my puffs less and less. And I know some of my videos are, I'm like a lot of people. I just tried to start remembering to tell you guys the dates when I make my videos because I realized some of the videos that I made, even though they posted it in May, even though I posted them in May, I did them way back in April. So you'll still see me wearing a puff. But um, yeah, since about the second week in May, I haven't been wearing any puffs and I feel like I've already seen like a difference in my hair. So anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about and I need to go because my video is now at 9 minutes and 16 seconds. So I definitely will talk to you guys later. Bye.